The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone, to tonight's public forecasting webinar on Mercury Retrograde and Sag Scorpio. This is Leroy Weimer, better known as Media Monk, on the podcast, and I'm joined by Star Lady, or Kim Marie, the Managing Director for the Evolutionary Astrology Network. We're going to have a nice look at, at an exciting Mercury retrograde coming up here. As you can see, we're going to cover, it's going to retrograde back through those early degrees of of, of Sag back into Scorpio, and we'll get to all those details in just a moment. And so welcome. For those of you that are oh, less familiar with this webinar format, by now you can see that orange arrow on your control panel you can expand that and there's some functionality there um, the primary thing if you have a question to ask of kim uh, something that's in third person vernacular uh, this is not a forum for a personal reading so just you know something relevant for the subject material hand i could pass that along to kim marie and have it answered on the air um oh what else kim what am i missing um you can gonna... type questions into the q a panel into the Q&A panel and, and I can answer them there. If I can't, I'll get Kim's attention. We'll get it answered on the um, actual webinar. There's also a chat pane. You can chat with me and uh, uh, as well. So with that, I'll welcome everybody and turn it over to Star Lady, AKA Kim Marie, the Managing Director for our Evolutionary Astrology Network. Thanks, Leroy. Welcome, everyone, to our current Mercury retrograde cycle. This Mercury is going to be retrograde, as you can see on your screen, from 13 Sag to 27 Scorpio. Goes retrograde November 16th through December 6th. Before we get into our materials, though, first of all, our housekeeping slide. There are three ways you can study with us at EAN. You can listen to our free weekly audio podcast. You can subscribe to the Astral Library. Or you can roll in one of our course segments to study evolutionary astrology with us. And one more housekeeping slide. We decided that we do a real good special on our forecasting webinars. I just finished up Jupiter and Sag last week. Week before that, did the nodal axis and Cancer Capricorn. Those are, you know, again, freshly done. Half price. You typically don't get them this good. But if you want to catch up with Saturn and Capricorn, Chiron and Pisces, Uranus and Taurus, all of the forecasting webinars that we have done are on sale of for course, 10 days. I should correct that. That's, that should be Chiron and Aries. And so we'll make that change as well. And so that's the most recent ingress oh. of Chiron into Aries. I, I got Chiron retrograding into Pisces. So I got Chiron <laughs> and Pisces on my mind. It's tiptoeing <laughs> back into Pisces. You're right. So it's not so that'll be easy to fix. But yeah, mostly it's uh, moving on in, in a whole new cycle. And you'll yep. get, I guess I should just add for those of again less familiar with our our webinars after the live webinar we put these pdfs up on the first page you'll get the uh, live uh, video link to the actual webinar itself so you can take the webinar right there click on the link you can um uh, also, uh, if you want to go walk the dog, you can download an audio link of the webinar and just listen to the thing. And uh, there's also a streaming MP3 file there, so you can just listen to the audio only. And all that's all those three links are on the first page of each and every one of these webinar PDFs. Also, uh, Star Lady uh, Kim Marie puts a lot of effort into all the PowerPoint slides that go into the webinar, all the keyword content, etc. You can print out any and all of those slides as kind of a resource uh, to kind of have at your workstation, et cetera. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, sometimes it's 50, 60, 70 slides. You might not want to print them all out, but you certainly are, are uh, can if you wish. So that's kind of how the PDFs work. Thanks for letting me get that in. Mm, you're most welcome, honey. Here's the dates, Mercury's retrograde and Sag Scorpio, including the pre-shadows, as you can see on your screen right here. Mercury first reached that 27 Scorpio, October 28th. Here's its retrograde on the 16th at 13 Sag. Here's the interior conjunction, which is the highlight of the Mercury retrograde, November 27th at 5 Sag. And then Mercury direct, December 6th. Oops. 
That's correct. I, now I'm doubting myself. I'm questioning all my little details. You know, you get, <laughs> talk about mercury. I get into this left brain thing of, do I got the date, the degree? Do I got the word spelled right? And then I have to do the right brain interpretation. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, uh, uh, this, this lady has got a lot of Virgo in her chart, and that's, a, that's ruled by the planet Mercury. And so she's uh, very proud of her details. And so <laughs> she, she takes mistakes personal. <laughs> By the way, we got one for the for the audio file. I want to just reiterate that that coupon code to get fifty percent off is Sagittarius. Sagittarius with two T's. You'll have to enter that coupon code. Uh, apply that code at checkout. It's very easy when you look at the uh, checkout process on our website. Uh, so Sagittarius is the is the gift to get the fifty percent off. And um, uh, thanks for letting me make sure everybody knows that on on the audio. You're most welcome. And then, of course, after Mercury turns direct December 6th, it finally leaves its post shadow, the third passage, December 24th, when it reaches that 13 and a half Sag again. So, briefly, why planetary retrogrades? They are a geocentric or Earth centered phenomenon of apparent motion. It is the planet's appearance to be going around the Earth earth from our perspective and whenever a planet is retrograde it's more powerful because that's when the planet is closest to earth or shines brightest in the night skies if you're out there watching it planetary retrogrades offer us an opportunity to break free from all of the consensus conditionings in our environment these retrogrades cause a withdrawal from the status quo of whatever that archetype is and it allows us to redefine that planetary archetype according to our own individual law venus retrograde what do i value in relationships mercury retrograde how do i want to speak up and communicate or how can i learn new ways of listening more clearly and thinking for myself rather than agreeing with whatever society says is right or wrong. Now, answers to retrograde lessons will always come from within ourself. Again, breaking free from conditioning factors and learning to think for ourselves in, in regards to Mercury retrograde. Now, a retrograde planetary archetype is non-static when it's retrograde. It's in a perpetual state of evolving. And we can look to the sign in the house that the planet is retrograde in by transit, and that's going to be the manifestation of everything. The opposite sign and house is where we get clarity, um, ob uh, um, objectivity, and uh, better expression of that planetary retrograde. And of course, any transiting retrograde planet is always going to be related back to that natal planetary archetype by house sign aspects. So regardless of where Mercury retrograde is transiting in your chart, it's always going to go back to your natal Mercury. And that natal Mercury signature is going to be breaking free or reviewing and individualizing itself just as much as transiting Mercury will be changing things in your world by sign in house and polarity sign in house. And then, of course, if you are someone who was born when Mercury was retrograde, you have what we call in astrology a temporary harmony because Mercury is acting just like it was when you were born. So those who have Mercury direct can feel maybe more frustration during a Mercury retrograde. Whereas if you were born with Mercury retrograde, it kind of just smooths out for you for a few weeks during that retrograde. Now, Mercury can never appear more than 29 degrees away from the sun from our Earth perspective. This is why wherever your sun sign is, Mercury can either be the sign before, the sign of, or the sign after your sun sign. And because Mercury is so close to the sun, 
It appears to have three to four retrograde cycles every calendar year, and it's retrograde anywhere from 20 to 24 days. Here's a visual of it. If we would watch Mercury in the sky 24-7 every night, we'd see Mercury pass the spot where um, it is going to go stationary direct, and it enters that pre-shadow with this blue line, goes retrograde, the red line's that retrograde motion, and then it goes direct, and here it is with the post-shadow until it finally moves beyond the retrograde degree and into new territory. And all the planetary retrogrades will appear to have that kind of a passage out there in the heavens if we were going to watch them that directly. Now, some of the Mercury retrograde patterns, the, the retrograde cycles reverse through the elements. So if you've been an astrologer for a while, you can go fire, earth, air, water, fire, earth, air, water. Well, the retrograde cycles go water, air, earth, fire. And so Mercury will have approximately one year of retrograde cycles in one of those elements. And then the next year, approximately, it'll go from one element to the next and repeat, repeat. So 2018, we've had our retrograde cycle start in fire. And now they're ending in the fire to water element as this particular retrograde cycle is doing. And Mercury, by the way, has been in fire signs of the zodiac, okay, Aries, Leo, Sag, for six and a half months in 2018. So if you think that communications have been more fiery or excitable than normal, that's the reason why. 2019, most of the retrograde cycles are going to be in the water element. We will have one retrograde cycle from fire to water in the middle of the year yet. Now, briefly, Mercury rules two archetypes at this point. The outer side of Mercury is its rulership of Gemini in the third house, and the outer comes from the active polarity, energy moving out. Mercury's rulership, Gemini third, Conscious mind, left brain. Here's where we want to take the world and put it into words and facts and figures and one plus one equals two. And we can classify everything in the world to make sense of it. This is where we rule all forms and devices of language and communications. And that's why when we have a Mercury retrograde, you can drop your cell phone and break it. You can, um, you know, have something get upset with the computer or anything with technology. Mercury has co-rulership of technology along with Uranus as well. And something that we don't always recognize with the air signs, we can see it with Gemini and um, Libra, but it's also true with Aquarius. The air signs kind of have these cycles of expand and contract, expand and contract. And in regards to Gemini, this we want to take in more information, more information. And Mercury retrograde means the mind is saturated and we gotta we gotta release information. And that's kind of that another way of saying that expand contract cycle. Another thing about this archetype of Mercury with Gemini third house is it it's the relativity of truth to that Sag polarity. It's exposing to Sag that there's more than one path home. So this outer side of Mercury will expose weak links in any argument or philosophy. And of course, some words, debate, clever, curious, versatile, twins, excitable, trickster, hamster, talkative, adaptable, argumentative. The inner side of Mercury is Virgo and the six, and this is Virgo working with passive polarity. It's still the conscious mind and left brain, and with the Patriarchy. Um, okay. All right. 
looks like my voice came back. Oh, that was interesting. So I stopped talking. Hopefully I didn't miss any words in the, in the recording. Um, it, there is also the distortion here of sadomasochism with Virgo and its polarity, Pisces 12th house. And this is due to the patriarchal distortions on planet Earth. And the sadomasochism is that guilt linked to atonement, which is the victim, or guilt linked to anger, which is the victor. And so this gets caught up in all the Mercury stuff. Leroy was joking before, I am a Pluto Virgo generation. I have a Mercury Sun tight conjunction and I'll get into those details and sometimes I can just, you know, eat myself up if I get some little detail wrong. We all have our various ways in which we do it, but any emphasis of Virgo or sixth house in your life and you can recognize where you've been conditioned by consensus with these patriarchal distortions. And of course, this is where Virgo can get into that inner outer criticism. There's a natural way to do it and there is the unnatural ways of the patriarchy in which we feel bad, wrong, and again, can beat ourselves up over it. Natural ways is just self-improvement. And of course, this is where this inner side of Mercury is really learning to be of service to another or society. So we're not only working to self-improve within ourselves, it's where we're trying to learn how to adapt in our relationships so that we can move into the Libra seventh as equals. Some other key words with this archetype of Mercury, nerves, worry, anxiety, self-doubt, procrastination. Mercury retrograde in general, again, releasing those excess thoughts. The mind is saturated. We're to a point we can't take in anything more. It's hard to process. And so we have to review and release all of the outworn mental patterns and thoughts. It's a time period to turn inward and quiet our mind, learning to think for ourselves and learning to trust our intuition first, logic and facts second. And the reason is because when Mercury's retrograde, it's pointing from left brain to right brain. Mercury ruler of Gemini, polarity points to polarity, Sagittarius ruler Jupiter. Mercury ruler of Virgo retrograde, points to Pisces polarity with ruler Neptune and Jupiter and Neptune work with right brain. So you can just see anytime Mercury's retrograde, regardless of where it is by sign house, the mutable quadrant is activated. And again, it is a time period to let go of right brain detail and trust, excuse me, let go of left brain detail and trust the right brain. More on this with Mercury Retrograde and Sag. How well can you find quiet time in the busyness of a retrograde overload? This is probably one of the things that we all have the most effort with. It's a time period to get quiet, and yet by nature of Mercury, when it's retrograde, things get busier been living with mercury retrogrades in the 35 years i've studied astrology and it's like oh every so often you know pre-shadow i'm like okay yep i feel this mercury retrograde coming up okay how much can i get done before it goes retrograde haha -ha. multiple communications during mercury retrogrades it's okay to discuss the subject five times and try not to um berate your partner or family or friends if they ask you a question more than once and you've already told them and given them the information we, we don't always hear the best when mercury's retrograde sometimes and of course it is about paying attention to the details driving electronics and technical logical world those all belong to mercury Sometimes we have to do things more than once to integrate, evolve, or release. And sometimes we have to take the time to just do it right. Oh, I'll take care of that later. I'll take care of that later. I'll take, clean up this mess later. No, let's just slow down 
and take care of that mess instead of looking at it day in, day out, day in, day out. And of course, Mercury retrograde in general is also the best time to gain clarity on how we want to move forward mentally. We've sh we're shaking up the left brain. We're shaking up communications. It's a natural time period to teach yourself new affirmations if you want to. Now, Mercury's retrograde in Sag and Scorpio puts it in these two signs for almost three months. You can see the dates on your screen here. That Mercury was in Scorpio and it's now in Sag. Uh, getting ready to turn retrograde again, November 16th. You'll see where it will dip back into Scorpio for about 12 days before then moving on to spend almost another month in Sagittarius post-retrograde. Here's the chart for Mercury turning stationary retrograde on November 16th. I always like to do zero degree Aries charts in a lot of classes because it's generic so that we can all look at it now this is going to be a very 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 active mercury retrograde because every planet you see circled has three aspects with mercury retrograde well exception of the sun it's just the interior conjunction now i don't list the moon aspects you can include moon here so the only planet mercury's are not going to aspect is neptune and look at when Mercury turns stationary retrograde at 1330 or 1329. Neptune's over here at 1342 Pisces. They won't have their last quarter square till December, but it is so close to being within orb. I think we can say Mercury's just going to aspect every single planet in this retrograde cycle. We also will have a grand trine going on throughout the retrograde cycle as you can see in blue and of course Venus turning stationary direct the same day Neptune goes retrograde Venus turns direct Friday the 16th in the morning at 2515 Libra Mercury goes retrograde Friday afternoon evening the Venus is still within orb of squaring the nodes and so is Uranus. They each had the exact squares to the nodes in late October, early November. Still quite tight orbs going on here. We'll look at these planets, um, uh, planetary aspects with Mercury in just a little bit. Let's work first, though, with Mercury retrograde in Sag. And it's November 16th until December 1st when it goes back into Scorpio. So with this Mercury retrograde cycle, there's going to be a need for self-honesty. Sagittarius can compromise. It can exaggerate. It's fire. It can get so excited that it just expands and expands and expands every time it tells a story. And so Mercury's retrograde in Sag is going to say, how honest can you be with yourself and others? And it's a time period where we're going to have some deep philosophical reflections about every area of life. What house is Mercury retrograde in Sag in? Is it in the 10th house of career or the second house of resources and how you make money? Is it in your seventh house of relationships? You know, we'll all have, you know, a certain house that's activated again deep philosophical reflections according to your natal mercury by house and sign as well we'll have inner conversations about this thoughts in our head we'll have outer conversations with others a big theme with sagittarius and of course we're looking at this with jupiter's year-long transit through sag truth versus lies theme is going to be exposed for each of us individually and we'll see it happening out there on various world stages collectively. 
It can mean that wherever we have polarities on issues, say between liberals and conservatives, that kind of stuff can be emphasized a little bit with Mercury and Sag. I'm right. No, I'm right. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. I'm right. And what can happen is people can get so excited or defensive about their beliefs, Sagittarius, that we don't listen. Mercury retrograde. And of course, Sagittarius is one of the signs that deals with legal issues and lawsuits. Um, not saying Capricorn doesn't as well. Sagittarius is the philosophy that then makes the Capricorn consensus laws. But the Sag ninth house also rules the legal system as well. And if you're following politics any at all in the United States, you know, when we have a Democratic president, the Republican attorneys general file lawsuits. When we have a Republican president, the Democratic attorneys general file lawsuits and back and forth and back and forth. That will be emphasized through Jupiter's year-long transit. It'll be emphasized with this Mercury retrograde. I am going to pause, or excuse me, I'm going to mute myself for a moment. All right, I'm back. And so philosophical discussions with everybody are going to be a little intensified with Mercury retrograde in Sag. We want to have those big right brain deep conversations and with Jupiter also there in Sagittarius which is the sign it rules you know moral religious and spiritual issues are going to be in the news the uh, the Catholic Church and the sexual abuse scandals were in the news again today and I didn't quite catch what the decision was I can't do you remember hearing it in the news today certain bishops said one thing and the Vatican come in and said another thing and so who's right who's wrong who's got who's, that kind of stuff could be in the news in many different um, religions right now well, they just and of delayed. course it was all about delaying the uh, they want the Catholic Church to um, publicize the list of all these questionable priests in the um, oh. in the ministry, and it, and it was all set to go about uh, being available today. And yet, you know, in typical Mercury retrograde fashion, uh, you know, it was postponed by the bishops at the bishops council. So, um, yeah, that so that's a perfect example of 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 such a Mercury retrograde, particularly in Sagittarius. It's particularly that truth versus Sag. So let us know who are the bad priests, so to speak. And of course, you know, the whole political issues, wherever you happen to be located, Mercury retrograde and Sag, you know, I've got the truth, you got the fake news and back and forth and back and forth. And that's also going to be you know, the media, you know, Sagittarius has an overall rulership of journalism. And you have seen how through uh, Trump's administration in the United States, you know, the media is the enemy of the people. I did not know this, but only 13% of countries worldwide have a free press. Got that? 13% of countries in the world have a free press so help me do the math that means 87 percent of countries control the media and the press to some degree isn't that whether bizarre you have, mm. where the yeah absolute control of it say living in china or probably Saudi Arabia, was a lot of the Middle East countries. I did not know that. And I'm like, wow. So, you know, both Mercury retrograde in Sag and Jupiter in Sag, we will see the media in the news again, again, and again. 
and you know cross our fingers that journalists can be free to speak you know the facts and report it without getting beheaded so as you can see one more time the truth versus lies you know that's just to put a number on that kim you know there's about i think mm -hmm. last count there's 195 countries you know probably 160 are in the united nations but you know let's say 195 is the right answer and 13 percent you know you only have like 26 nations that really um foster uh great communication for their people through a free press mm-hmm yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, quite an interesting little detail. And so, oops, okay, hold on. I've got to get back to my thing working. So all of these, like we said, these multiple planetary aspects, they're really going to intensify this need to, that, that we've got to make that conscious effort to just be quiet and listen to our intuition. To trust the instinct when it pops up during Mercury retrograde. And can we make an effort to try and listen and understand someone or something or an issue first versus us wanting to come out there and, you know, let me tell you. Now, let me tell you, according to my mother-in-law, <laughs> who's a Gemini, <laughs> Sun in Gemini. So it brings up that whole teach versus preach, which is one of the archetypes of Sagittarius as well. Teaching means we want to, for the most part, okay, anything can be abused, but we're wanting to learn and expand and grow. Sagittarius, Jupiter. Preaching, not always, but many times, can get caught up in that I need to convince and convert you to my way of thinking or my philosophy so Sagittarius ninth house and ruler Jupiter uh, has general rulership of nature and what we call natural spiritual principles in evolutionary astrology that means timeless universal principles that can be found through observing nature through observation correlation there's nothing you take on blind faith and so this would be activated during this mercury retrograde show me the truth what's real and so if you can make an effort to get in nature whenever you're confused during this mercury retrograde mercury retrograde in general but especially this one and it'll help you rebalance yourself it'll help you find your center again and as we've probably already said all kinds of religious issues can be exposed debated religious scandals can come in the news and um, with that show me the truth this is our mercury retrograde and sag theme show me the truth show me the truth because again we're trying to throw off any limited versions of personal truth and expand into more timeless universal truth when Mercury is retrograde in Sagittarius. So this can be one of those mantras you can say during this Mercury retrograde. Show me the truth. Show me the truth. Show me the truth. Ask for it and the universe will bring it to you. Can you be open-minded enough to hear it? Now, the Gemini polarity, it is going to increase the need for multiple communications until we're on some type of common ground or we agree to disagree until there's some understanding about what we're trying to communicate back and forth. And so here again, Mercury retrograde is going to mean an ability to listen as much as speak. And with that polarity in Gemini, we can be quite interruptive. We can be argumentative. We are not really listening. We're just waiting for the other person to shut up so we can get our point across. And again, I'm right, you're wrong. So while Gemini can expose that weak link, it goes both directions. We can expose a weak link to somebody. They can expose one to us. And so with this Mercury retrograde in Sag, Gemini polarity, 
breath work. Gemini is the breath in. Sag is the breath out. Gemini takes in the information, takes in the breath. Sag integrates it and releases what's no longer needed. So not only literally taking time to breathe, but metaphorically as well. And so Gemini polarity, we can just want to do, do, go, go. And so can we just pace ourselves? And that will help us make choices and decisions on where we want to apply our energy. Mercury retrograde in fire with an air polarity, it can really, um, you know, accentuate that the the detail overload too much to do too much to do too much to do trying to get too much done um i'm pluto in virgo Leroy is pluto in the third house he's a gemini soul and he has a couple planets in virgo square the nodes mercury and jupiter and we go back and forth because one of us would be going, you know, either whether it's a work day or it's a day off and, you know, okay, so we're going to do this and this and this and this. And whichever one's trying to overload the schedule, the other one comes along and say, see, you're doing what you accused me of doing, which is trying to put too much into a day. <laughs> we go back and forth over that all the time. <laughs> so we've also then worked with the communications of how would you like the day to go, honey? Question mark. And, you know, actually listen to what the other person's thinking or planning or processing or wanting to do. All that can be very germane when we have this particular mercury retrograde cycle and again as one more time you know slowing down and actually addressing the situation taking the time to go through the mercurial details rather than rushing through and then having to go do it all over again you know, most of the software programs today are pretty good at saving things automatically. I can remember back in the day, I remember when I used to write my forecasts one, once a month. And I remember it only happened once. But one time, I, it was a Word doc, I wrote out the entire month's forecast. And then something goofed up on my computer and I didn't have it saved and I lost it. And I had to do the whole thing all over again. I don't remember if Mercury was retrograde or not, but talk about an explosion. I couldn't believe it. And I had no choice. You get the point. Again, software usually does it for us nowadays, but this Mercury retrograde cycle, there can be something that comes up that just says, okay, take the time to educate yourself. Take the time to slow down. Take the time to figure it out. Try not to rush through. And again, as we had spoken earlier with some of the air signs, they'll, they'll expand, contract, expand, contract. You know, understand that with this Gemini polarity, okay, we have to sometimes just get quiet. Sometimes just go inward. And sometimes instead of taking that effort to process through the details, maybe it's something that we need to just throw off and not do anymore. You know, I wrote my forecast for oh, um, almost 10 years. It was a nine-year numerological cycle. I hadn't, didn't quite get into 10. But it took so much time out of my schedule. I just couldn't write it anymore. And I switched to speaking the forecasts. Those are the weekly forecasts that Leroy came in and started doing with me. And it just freed up my schedule. And But my Pluto Virgo, it took me a long time to just give up that writing until finally the universe was saying, 
How exhausted do you want to be? How overworked do you want to be? So Gemini may just be saying, make a choice. You don't need this in your life anymore. Let it go. And then, of course, as we've been speaking, recognize the relativity of truth on the path to universal truth. Judge less, discern more. Can you give someone else the freedom to be where they want to be politically? Can you give them the freedom to be where they want to be in regards to their belief system? You know, in regards to patriarchal distortions versus natural law, it's okay to expose outright lies. And if you're breaking a law in your community or country, well, there is, you know, consequences to that. So we can see a lot of that stuff exposed over this next month. Mercury retrograde in Gemini. It might be interesting to see if the Mueller investigation in the United States comes out with some Gemini details of what was going on during the election or even beyond and of course how well can you let go of a personal truth gemini exposing the weak link can you let go of what you thought was truth for a larger truth that's going to be really emphasized during this retrograde cycle and of course gemini polarity we can refuse to communicate we can just go silent we can continue the lie until you know we're six feet under and we can have complete and utter refusal to even consider another person's view on various subjects and you know just go rigid and that might create maybe a little bit of an explosion with mercury retrograde metaphorically so with this Mercury retrograde cycle in Sagittarius, Mercury ruling left brain, Sagittarius and its ruler Gem or Jupiter right brain, what we can have is uh, going on is what, what EA will call brain switching. And that means the brain is just bouncing back and forth between left brain, right brain, left brain, right brain, logic, intuition, logic, intuition, details and gut. And it can create time periods or situations where we just get utterly confused and it's almost like we can't think clearly it's another way of telling us that our brain is overloaded and we have to quiet down and so it can also lead to not trusting the intuition or gut when it comes through during mercury retrograde in sag oh that doesn't mean anything and so when you feel yourself just getting into that mental overload or confused or not being able to do anything, as we talked before, find a way to quiet your mind. Meditation, Tai Chi, yoga, a walk, running, swimming, you know, breath work. Just find a way to relax. Just go sit outdoors in nature. If it's not below freezing, we have snow on the ground, an inch. It's not much. It's going to be 60 degrees on Wednesday, but it wasn't today. <laughs> but we still got outside in nature. <laughs> but that, you know, you may have to be really working consciously to do some of these things when you feel yourself get so wound up that you just are confused and can't make sense of anything now from december 1st through the 6th when mercury goes stationary retrograde we have mercury retrograde in scorpio again i just put those dates in red they're just the exact retrograde dates okay it's not that whole three month passage um when mercury backs up into the last few degrees of scorpio it, it's going to be just an emotional, you know, reaction to everything going on in our world. 
And one of the things that we've got to be able to realize is that our outer world is out of our control. How we react to it, how we respond to whatever's going on, that's within our control. But you can't always stop the wildfire in California. You can't always necessarily stop your partner from cheating on you. You know, we can't always control another person. But what we want to do inwardly, how we want to act inwardly, that's what's within our power. Mercury going retrograde in Scorpio can bring up confrontations. Because Scorpio's fixed water, fixed emotions. And so the emotional energy is building up until something explodes and Mercury is going to have to deal with it in regards to communications. So how are our situations or landscapes in our world changing? And how is it showing us where we have old mental attitudes towards you know, intimate relationships or uh, Taurus polarity values around that. How is Mercury showing us where our intimate relationships need to change? And of course, whenever a planet is retrograde in Scorpio, it's going to bring up conflicts with the soul's dual desire nature. In evolutionary, desire, in evolutionary astrology, we have separating desires and returning desires. Separating desires, a new lover, a new job, a new car, a new this, a new that. We exhaust the separating desires until over many lifetimes. Why am I here? What's this all mean? The returning desire starts to become more and more conscious. And eventually it's the only desire left. And by the way, the last exhausting desire, the last separating desire to be exhausted is sexuality. Last separating desire is sexuality. Only 2 to 3% of the souls on the planet may be naturally celibate. And they're the evolved avatars. They are not your religious leaders. So Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, what's no longer serving me? What desires can I release that just don't work for me anymore? Been there, done that. And of course, that whole, you know, power versus powerless, what we can change, what we can't change. Mercury retrograde in Scorpio can frustrate us because mm, I want to be able to control this person or that situation or, you know, let's go of mine. And Mercury retrograde is going, well, oh, you're not going to be able to do that. So can we surrender to what is within our power and what's not? Can we surrender and release the desires we've exhausted that no longer serve us? Can we change our attitude around all that stuff? Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, deep, inner, psycho, psychoanalysis. This will allow us to realize wherever we are stuck in any mental stagnation. We can uncover the motivations, intentions, our desires, as we spoke, those emotional patterns that we all have. They can show us where we want to have any type of manipulation in our world. Are you trying to manipulate your partner? Are you trying to manipulate the citizens of your community or your state or your country or whatever? It can really expose the underhandedness of some of our motivations here. And that means we got to find the courage to make whatever changes are necessary, especially in intimate relationships, Scorpio. So if you are in an intimate relationship, can you have deep conversations with your partner? What are your emotional fears? What are, what's emotionally frustrating you right now? What relating patterns in that relationship need to be changed? How do your communication styles between you and your loved one need to change? Here's the opportunity to do it, Mercury Retrograde. And of course, you know, the 
emotional magnetism of Scorpio, and again, the dual desire nature, we can attract in others who can motivate us from a positive perspective, show us what we want to emulate from them, or we can attract in others who may want to manipulate us from a negative perspective, and it can show us where we are wanting to manipulate others as well. And of course, if you're going to have a Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, it always brings up the whole issue of uh, death, sex, and resources, shared resources in life and in the news. You look at the wildfires in California, and, you know, my heart goes out to the people who have lost everything, whether they're the McMansion in Southern California or, you know, a tiny little trailer house somewhere else. I have a, a girlfriend, and I've got more than one. I mean, I've known more than one person who's lost everything in a house fire. I have a, a girlfriend, her husband's deceased now, but um, they uh, were literally um, out of state vacationing with uh, one of their uh, elderly parents down in Arizona. And they came back to Rapid City where I live. And, well, they found out before they came home, but the house caught on fire while they were gone and she lost all of her mother's antiques. That's Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. One moment everything's there and the next moment it's gone. Out to the ultimate death. Betrayals of trust and love affairs exposed. Relationship endings, beginnings, and confrontations. This is almost like a continuation of the Venus retrograde in Scorpio, Libra. And, you know, the whole sexuality stuff can come back in the news with Mercury retrograde in Scorpio and what's right, what's wrong. Scorpio shared resources, so it brings up resources, money, and finances. And as we look at Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, those that have the resources don't necessarily want to let go of them. There can be resource control and hoarding. Resources can be gained or lost depending upon prior efforts and how we have built up karma. Karma can go from 100% negative to 100% positive. And be careful of making any assumptions. Sometimes it's not um, a karmic retribution. Sometimes it's an evolutionary necessity. Sometimes it's necessary for something to happen to wake the soul up. Sometimes with karma, it's the pendulum swing. You did it to someone else, it's going to happen to you. All that kind of stuff comes up through Mercury and Scorpio. And of course, we have a grand trine taking place in water and fire. The Chirons in late retrograde back in, well, it was retrograde in Aries, now it's retrograde back into late Pisces. The North Node has went from Leo to Cancer. And of course, the Mercury retrograde in Sag and Scorpio. So even though I listed the water there, it's the mixture of water and air. The water part of this is what I was pointing out. There's potential for a lot of emotional healing and harmony with this Mercury retrograde, especially when it goes back into Scorpio. But there also can be the distortion to want to emotionally blame others and manipulate them. So Mercury retrograde, you have choice. What side of the fence are you going to be on in your relationships, regardless of whether they're intimate or not? Now the Taurus polarity, when Mercury reverses back into Scorpio, Communication slowdowns. All of a sudden, when Mercury goes back into water, Earth, Scorpio, Taurus, it can have us literally wanting to quiet down and go inward. 
you're exhausted through Mercury retrograde in Sag, Gemini polarity. So we want some quiet time. Communications will go slower. So we have to practice patience when Mercury, you know, points to the fixed air polarity. Simplification. Taking the time to really listen. Listen to your own inner thoughts. Listen to others because, again, the brain will literally slow down and process information more slowly. Fixed water, we can stay stuck in the emotion. Fixed earth, we can stay stuck in a thought. And of course, with this polarity, security buttons will be pushed all over the place. You know, Scorpio builds up pressure until it, there's a confrontation. Fixed water, fixed emotions. And so rug gets wiped under, out underneath us. The Taurus polarity is how do you reach for deeper inner security? How stubborn are you going to be? Can you make that effort to listen and shift and change and try something new? And if you're feeling your security buttons really pushed, reflect back to a time when a similar situation happened and you lived through it, you made it through, perhaps you even flourished, perhaps it was the best thing that ever happened to you. You know, I will draw in new clients sometimes and, you know, they'll go, well, how did you start studying astrology? And I go, oh, well, my ex left me for my best friend. And I say it so easy and lightheartedly, and they just like, oh, oh, no. And I'm so then I have to follow with the line. Well, I found astrology. I hope he's as happy as I am today. So, again, point you can reflect and go, okay, I will be okay with this changing outer world. I will find a new place to live. I will get new resources to those that I lost to fire or the floods on the southeast with all the hurricanes that happened earlier this summer. Here again, one more time, I'm repeating this one with the Taurus polarity, resources, money, and finances, okay? We're going to activate that Pluto and Saturn and Capricorn and not wanting to let go. And, you know, sooner or later with wealth inequality in this extreme, there's going to be what they will call the biblical jubilee or a redistribution of resources in some way. Stay tuned. We'll see how that ends up happening. But you might get some little inklings on it for yourself through this Mercury retrograde. And this Taurus polarity is about evolving our values around resources cleaning out clutter literally and figuratively and mentally inside your head can you see yourself as a resource can you be open to the sparks that mercury is bringing for you to create new talents to create more resources for yourself however your values want to do it Again, it's a natural time period to withdraw, to find a sense of who we are again. Withdrawing into ourself, Taurus is passive polarity, it's Earth. And yet, Mercury's retrograde pointing towards that Taurus polarity says, you still got to be willing to communicate however necessary, and you got to be willing to hear what Intimate partners want to say back to you, Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. So when Mercury retrogrades back into Scorpio with that Taurus polarity, it will feel like we're still going through Venus retrograde. It's just continuing to have us evolve our values from everything we've been doing for the last six months. <laughs> now, I always put this one in. 
Mercury moves so fast, it's always aspected or it's always active or aspecting several planets during its retrograde cycles. And evolutionary astrology utilizes the 360 degree cycle of phases and aspects to recognize how active Mercury really is during any retrograde cycle. And here's the 0 to 360. You can see the eight phases inside the circle. New phase is instinctual emergence. It is a yang phase. Crescent is a struggle to create that new. It's yin phase and so forth. And then you see all the aspects from 0 to the 360. So here's a listing of the Mercury retrograde aspects, not including sun or moon. And they're all three aspects except for the Mercury's conjunction to Venus that happens only once. Mercury can easily have multiple aspects to a planet sometimes, almost always does with Venus. Last Mercury retrograde cycle had two aspects to Mars and two aspects to Jupiter. Six aspects to Mars and Jupiter during the last Mercury, red si Mercury retrograde cycle. So going through these here again, here's the dates for you and Mercury's retrograde from November 16th to December 6th with the pre and post shadows and the degrees. And of course, one more time, the halfway point of any retrograde cycle is when that planet is conjunct or opposing the sun. And when that happens, regardless of the planetary retrograde, that conjunction or opposition is when that planet is closest to Earth. And with Mercury, this is the interior conjunction. Mercury is between Sun and Earth. And that's, as you can see on your screen, November 27th, 5 degrees Sag. It's almost like one of the highlighted degrees of this Mercury retrograde cycle. What do you have in the early degrees of Sag or the early degrees of mutable signs, which of course is Gemini, Virgo, Sag, Pisces, which will have squares, oppositions, conjunction. What do you have around five degrees of air signs, which, or excuse me, fire signs, which would be Aries and Leo, and they'll have trines to this interior conjunction. There'll be more ease in regards to the aha moments going on. Here is the interior conjunction. And I want you, the, 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 mm, the planets change right here. We, when, we, and during the interior conjunction, the moon joins the north node. These are kind of the two anchor points of this grand trine, whereas it's a mixture of Mercury, Sun, and Jupiter right here. But we still have planets squaring this Sag Pisces every th throughout the retrograde cycle. We still have Venus and Uranus opposing and squaring the nodes. So these three configurations are active throughout the entire Mercury retrograde. So Venus and Uranus in cardinal signs square the nodes, two steps forward, one step backward. What do I really value? The grand trine in water and fire with Mercury retrograde. There's an ease of being able to intuitively understand what's changing if we make the effort. And of course, when we have squares, to have you know them in the mutable quadrant, Gemini, Virgo, Sag, Pisces, as the green lines are, they're the more easier places to have squares and oppositions because it's mutable modality. Mutable is adapt, change, move, release, integrate, let go, understand. And so while we can have that sense of frustration with the Venus-Uranus opposition, square the nodes, other parts of this Mercury retrograde can say again, oh, I get this. Oh, this is what I'm, you know, needing to change in my world. Oh, now I understand what all this means. Now, in regards to Mercury and Venus retrograde, because we're just coming off this Venus retrograde cycle, 
Mercury started 45 degrees away, then 30 degrees away from Gemini, caught up to it and conjuncted it mid-October. And now it's going to, it moved 30 degrees away, 45 degrees away, Venus direct, Mercury retrograde, one more semi-square, semi-sextile, and then another fourth semi-square, semi-sextile between them. So we basically have here over the course of what, October, four months, Mercury and Venus go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So they can get as far as 60 degrees away from each other, but in this one right now, it's 45, 30, 45, 30. And so I think that the Mercury retrograde is just going to extend conversations and communications into relationships and what's real, what's not, where's the truth, where's the lie, where's the betrayal, where's the fake news, where's the real facts, and we'll do this personally and collectively. So what we're really doing is, is this Mercury retrograde is going to be an effort to communicate what we're learning from that Venus retrograde journey of self-love and outer love. We're just going to be continuing on with it. Now, remember I said Mercury pulled ahead of Venus October 15th? It's going to be ahead of Venus until um, next mid-July um, when Mercury will have a retrograde cycle and... Um, It'll go behind Venus again. So between mid-October to mid-July, Mercury ahead of Venus, conscious mind, Mercury, is having to slow down. It's racing ahead of Venus. It's having to slow down and reconsider what's really important, those Venus values. And again, Mercury and Venus are always interacting during a Mercury retrograde. They're a little more active in this particular one, and they're both retrograde back to back. So how well can I communicate what's important to me? Mercury will have three last quarter squares to Mars. And these are separated enough date-wise, October, November, January, that each one takes place in a different sign, signs, but they're all last quarter squares. And that's the crises in consciousness. And in this case, it's going to be a crisis in consciousness, Mercury, what do I do with actions, Mars? So it lends us to the... to to, to, to it's important that we slow down and listen, understand, reflect, ponder, then take action. It also sets up multiple chances to get it right. Whatever it is we're trying to do, whatever it is we're trying to say, whatever it is we're trying to figure out in our world. And of course, remember that sun's, you know, Mercury retrogrades interior conjunction with the sun was the 27th um, at 5 Sag. The Mercury square to Mars is going to be really strong during the halfway point of the retrograde cycle. What is the highest and best actions for me? And remember we had a Mars retrograde this summer from 9 Aquarius to, uh, what was it, 27 Capricorn? So Mars is direct and Mars is really starting to move forward. Mars has gotten clear on what's the leading edge of its desire nature. Those natural separating desires that we haven't fulfilled yet and returning desires. Mercury's going to help get clear on that. But there's not a guarantee that we will act in what's highest and best for ourselves and others. There can be a lot of manipulation that could go on in order to be 
in power and control. Mars, I have to be biggest, best, first, you know, you know, largest, you know, that Aryan energy that has to, you know, just be superhuman with, you know, these aspects get distorted. We can have some real good sneaky con games and manipulations going on. So just ask, what's highest and best action for all concerned? What is highest and best action for myself and others? And of course, I, you know, Jupiter's in Sagittarius. Mercury's moved into Sag. So we may see the wildfires in the news a little bit more. Last year, we had a Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius, and we had a forest fire in western South Dakota in the Black Hills. It was actually in Custer State Park. It ended up burning 85,000 acres. It wasn't complete 100% burn because the winds were just like they are in California. The winds were so strong. They just couldn't fight the fire, and it just would you know, the, 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 the flames would leap a mile away. And um, buffalo, which evolved naturally along with fire, almost all the park buffalo were just fine. They had to supplement some food over the winter. We did lose a few, few of the burrows, and I'm sure we lost other wildlife as well. But... The point is, is last year when Mercury was retrograde in Sag, I think that was our second or third largest wildfire in our state. And it was started by a downed power, power line. Um, a tree fell over on the power lines. And they're thinking that might be the cause. I can't remember which one of the California wildfires, but one of those big ones. They think that may, it may be something to do with the power line. So I offer my condolences and my prayers for peace, whether you're being hit by a wildflower or you're being, you know, devastated with mold from a hurricane. However, nature is recorrecting herself. Mercury retrograde in Sag is to understand that we co-create and we need to live we we live with nature we do not have dominion over nature now mercury's going to have three conjunctions to jupiter in sag in its own sign and by the way mercury's going to have the retrograde conjunction to jupiter on the same day of its interior conjunction to the sun so one more time, that end of, November, no, end of November might be strong in the news. There may be a lot of things that break in the news, be it whatever's going to be the latest things with, with you know, the, the priest abuse scandal with the Catholic Church and they finally release the names of the questionable bishops or whether there's, you know, the Mueller investigation comes out with um, indictments or whatever stay tuned we expect the end of november to be very active in the news cycle now remember mercury left brain jupiter right brain mercury retrograde and conjunct jupiter we can have an intensity of arguing over who's right and who's wrong now it points to getting towards the truth of something but Sag can lie, and Sag can tell the truth. Gemini can lie, Gemini can tell the truth. All 12 archetypes can lie or tell the truth. So it's just going to vary how it comes out. You know, truth would be exposed in one area, and another area, someone or something is going to get away with the next lie. So personally, how I always say, you know, attracting people who want to learn evolutionary astrology is almost always attracting people who want to know the truth. Show me the truth. 
what's the largest understanding of the universe I can comprehend. So I have a tendency to say, just be as honest with yourself and others as you can. Be as ethical with yourself and others as you can. And if you are energizing honesty, anyone who tries to lie to you will be exposed because the vibration just doesn't work. You know that old saying, you can fool some of the people all the time and you can fool all the people some of the time? But you cannot fool all the people all the time. That's sad. And that's emphasized with these Jupiter-Mercury conjunctions during its retrograde cycle. Now the intent of Mercury conjunct Jupiter, even three times here, three chances, the intent is to rebirth our intuition, to allow that right brain to really guide our communications, to be able to hear the message that the other person is trying to express rather than just caught up or triggered by words. And so, one of those good old pray for peace aspects. And again, breathe, slow down, get in nature. What would you have me know, Source? What would you have me know, Source? Mercury conjunct Jupiter. What would you have me do, Source? Mercury, last quarter square, Mars. Now, I think with Jupiter and Sag, we're going to find a lot of legal issues in the news. We're going to find a lot of lawsuits in the news. So I just picked up, well, what's happening today? Well, today, two voter rights groups, voter rights groups, um, sued to prevent Florida Governor Rick Scott, who is leaving office and who ran for the Senate. He's in a real, real close recall count, re -election, general election recount. He's in a real close one with, um, I think, a, a Democrat. Yeah, he's a Republican, a Democratic uh, opponent. And so they're saying, listen, you don't get to be in charge of the recount for the office that you want to have to, to gain. So Common Cause Florida and the League of Women Voters of Florida filed federal lawsuits today in Tallahassee, Florida. They want a temporary restraining order and a preliminary injunction to remove Scott from any role in the recount of the 2018 Florida general election for the Senate. Just one example. Um, you know, you can... You can take your pick with the news and social media in regards to what you want to see with lawsuits and legal issues. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are interested in the Jupiter in Sagittarius um, webinar that I did, I did a, a, a um, the source was Forbes magazine. And they did an article listing every lawsuit that Donald Trump is involved in, from the defamation lawsuits with, you know, a former apprentice gal, the Stormy Daniels, um, uh, porn stars, you know, hush hush, to the Trump Foundation and copyright laws, to the emollients clause, to you you name it I, I was I it was a bigger list than I thought was going on and I'll show you Donald's Trump chart in just a minute here and you know it's the Jupiter and, and Sag is going to hit his chart really strong this year um stay tuned but first of all Mercury is going to make waning semi-sextiles to Saturn from Sag to Capricorn and then, of course, in January, Mercury will catch up with Saturn and have a conjunction. So 
Mercury here is going to be acting like a catalyst to break down old realities and old structures and Pluto and Capricorn, old political structures. And what can happen here is, you know, the lies that could be told in order to keep the control and power, but we could also have an exposure of those lies or an exposure of the manipulations and um, distortions that are going on. Now, what we would want to be working with with these aspects is self-honesty and self-responsibility. How am I responsible for myself in any and all ways? And how can I then have, you know, direct and ethical communications in my work and career in anything it with family Capricorn with you know any uh, any any area where I'm having to deal with power and powerlessness how can I be ethical how can I be honest how can I be direct so here's where I wanted to continue in regards to the conversation with Donald Trump. Many of you, if you don't know this, he has, you know, this stellium with the North Node in Gemini and then Moon in Sag conjunct the South Node. Now, Mercury is not going to aspect this opposition, but Jupiter will, with its retrograde cycle, Hit the south node and moon three times and oppose Uranus, north node, and sun three times. And so I think that there is just going to be this catching up with Donald Trump in regards to the truth versus lies theme. I don't remember which media said this, but um, I like to follow the Associated Press. They've been around for a hundred years and they're just a news organization that has historically went out there and tried to find what the facts are. And then they, you know, sell, share their stories with newspapers across the country, AP. And I consider them to be probably one of the most neutral sources when you're looking for um, facts in regards to what's going on out there. And I think it was the Associated Press that said that Donald Trump went from lying an average of five times per day to telling 30 lies per day in the last month when he was on the campaign trail. So this Mercury retrograde can see some catching up of that. Um, remember I said November 27th is the interior conjunction. Jupiter conjuncts Mercury as uh, that day before. Was it the yet? Yeah, no, day after, I think it was. Mercury has the, Jupiter and Mercury have their second conjunction right in here at this time period as well. And remember, Mercury has the second last quarter square to Mars. So this um, uh, Sag Pisces square gets drawn in. My point is that I think this Mercury retrograde could be setting the stage for some of the lawsuits and legal issues and truth versus lies situations that Donald Trump is going to be dealing with over this next year with Jupiter and Sag. And not only that, as you can see on your screen, December 18th, Donald Trump's progressed North Node retrogrades back to be exact to Uranus. Now, that's, you know, Uranus is the great liberator, but it's also the great upsetter. So this could be a little interesting for him in the next couple of months, not to mention next year. And I'm also pointing out this transiting Saturn in Capricorn is opposed to his Mercury three times. Um, He's going to have Mercury, Mercury in conjuncts three times. Okay, Mercury waning semi-sextiles to Saturn in the sky. That aspect is then impacting his own Mercury. The, uh, um, uh, an interesting statement was made by Trevor Noah in the 
from the what do they call that? The Daily, the Daily Show. Is that what it's called? The Daily Show, the old John Stewart show that Noah Trevor took over. Um, after the election, he was quoted as saying, and I'm paraphrasing, "We've had two years of seeing Donald Trump when he's winning." We're going to spend the next two years finding out what Trump's really like when he's losing. Stay tuned. I make no apologies that I don't support Donald Trump. And every so often I get comments from people lambasting me and telling me my head's in the sand and I'm full of fucking lies. Find another astrologer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I am going to stand for truth as I see it, as best I can understand it. You're welcome to find it however you want to. Okay, I'll take a deep breath and calm down now. Mercury will make three waning trines to Chiron. This is where it gets emotional when it re retrogrades back into Scorpio. And so here again, deep emotional conversations around healing where we feel victimized, where we feel wounded, where we feel betrayed. And what can we be doing about that? And how can we communicate it and be understood and understand others and move through that whole healing process together in some way? How can we throw off old mental patterns of being the victim? It can also have some deep reflections on spirituality and religion, Pisces. But we've got to follow through in acting upon whatever our evolving beliefs may be. So we can have that potential for self-healing or, again, the sadomasochism that comes from the Virgo Pisces 6th, 12th house polarity. Both sides can be the sadist. Both sides can be the masochist, okay? We could, waning trine, remain stuck in all of our woundedness and victimization. We could refuse to listen to somebody else. We could, again, avoid or neglect those communications. I'm too emotionally upset to talk to you. I don't want to hear what you have to say because it's going to trigger me emotionally. And so, again, the waning, the, the trines are the couch potato or the lazy aspects and we can stay stuck. So we have to make effort with trines. Ease of effort, ease of reward, I like to say. So this Mercury retrograde will still bring about opportunities for emotional healings in those last degrees of Scorpio. Mercury makes waning in conjuncts to Uranus, the 210 degree, the outer adjustments. Waning in conjuncts, outer adjustments. Waxing in conjuncts, inner adjustments. So Mercury, Uranus, and this can lead to some arguments as well. Mercury conscious mind, Uranus unconscious mind. And when they get together, sparks can fly. And those sparks can be all kinds of new ideas and um, understandings and communications. Or they can be arguments. And with Uranus retrograding back into Aries... These arguments can lead into some impulsive actions. You know, we can act before we think. And this Mercury retrograde is trying to say, okay, let's think about this before we bust out. Let's think about this before we explode. Let's think about this before we run away. And compromise, outer adjustments waning in conjunct who's in our world that we have to make some type of compromise with on a personal level on a collective level can we agree to disagree you're free to believe what you want will you allow me the freedom to believe what i want and we can both be happy as long as your freedom ends at my nose 
and my freedom ends at your nose. As long as we're not hurting each other, can, can we give each other the freedom on the many paths home? Can we give each other the freedom to have different opinions? Can we, again, agree to disagree? The distortions of this is going to, again, go into the manipulations, especially with Mercury retrograde into Scorpio. It's going to go into, I'm right, you're wrong. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to maintain my power and control or to have my freedom and not let you take it away from me. So here's the United States chart. And what Mercury retrograde will do with this retrograde cycle mainly, I use the Gemini rising chart, okay, the 2.13 a.m. for July 4th, 7 degree Gemini. Excuse my burp. What Mercury, this Mercury retrograde cycle will mainly do is three oppositions to Uranus. So while we have, again, if you look at Mercury, the outer wheel is the transits for the interior conjunction. If you look at Mercury having that waning in conjunct to Uranus in the sky, it's literally opposing the U.S. Uranus. And this will be true with the Sibley Sagittarius rising chart for July 4th as well. And so sparks of communications are, I mean, I, I mean, you know, for, for many of us in the United States, just coming off of the midterm elections and all the media stuff and news stuff and, you know, social media, journalism, truth versus lies, you know, Republicans versus Democrats and election recounts and our, you know, president, you know, spouting off whatever he wants on his, out of his mouth, whether it's truth or not. Mercury is going to emphasize that this retrograde cycle. So it may really want you to just turn off the media and get outside. Especially, well, if you live in the cooler areas, it might be time to go skiing or snowmobiling or snowshoeing or just walking out there in nature. Figure out some way, somehow, to get yourself disconnected from technology and recenter in nature. Mercury is going to make waning semi-squares to Pluto. This is where Mercury goes from last quarter phase to balsamic phase. And so it's going to be very similar to Mercury's waning semi-sextiles to Saturn. It, what is it about the, the, the material world and old realities that are just not survivable? You know, all the way, you know, Saturn's direct, Pluto's direct. And Saturn is going to get very, very close to Pluto in 2019 before their conjunction in January 2020. And so Saturn balsamic Pluto is, there will continue to be old realities and old power structures that are crumbling because they're not sustainable anymore. And Mercury will act like that messenger or the catalyst and when Mercury's retrograde, it emphasizes all of that. And so what, how is it happening in your world? Where are some of your old reality structures that um, are not working anymore? And it doesn't always have to be, you know, bad things. You know, I've been saving my pennies to replace all the old carpet in our house. So for us, one of our outworn realities is the carpet's done. I we, we When we moved in, we didn't put new carpet in. We had three cats, and we thought, well, as our cats leave out, live out their natural lives, then we'll get new carpets. Well, guess what? Our three cats lived out their natural lives, and before the last cat crossed over, we got a kitten that showed up spontaneously. Those of you who know me know that I talk about Rocky, our two-year-old black and white, 
Well, then guess what? Last month for my wedding anniversary slash birthday, my sweetie pie brought home a kitten. We now have two cats in our family again. Well, I was planning and saving my money to get rid of the carpet before <laughs> the new cats came along. <laughs> but it's now upon us this winter. And so I'm in process of looking at carpet, looking at flooring and going, uh, okay, this is not going to work anymore. I'm not going to have carpet, you, you know, in all throughout all the house. It's too blah, blah, blah. Anyway, my point is, some of those crumbling realities are not necessarily bad ones that you want to leave, that you want to fall apart. Sometimes it's just material things that have ran its course, and it's time to let it go and move on. We also could, here again with Mercury, has some deep practical conversations, Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto, the soul, deep. Capricorn, practical. Mercury, conversations. Or stubbornly defending I'm right, you're wrong, this is true, that's fake news, blah, blah. You can see where you are on the spectrum of some things and you can take it on a personal level and you know telling your partner no I'm right about this issue and you're wrong no you're blah 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 um finally Mercury makes trines to the north node or the I like to say the north node is making a waxing trine to Mercury I always compare the nodes to the planet which means you start with the planet and you go clockwise to each node. So the north node is a waxing trine to Mercury and the south node is a waning sextile. Now with the south node Mercury, potential for objectivity, self-responsibility and searching for truth. That south node in Aquarius and Capricorn. North node to Mercury, potential for creative breakthroughs or inspiration or recognizing deep, deep self-love going from Leo to Cancer. Of course, the distortions, they can get stuck in the class warfare, the inequality, nationalism, defensiveness, all the emotional fears get triggered or manipulated and played with. If we look at this last midterm election, you know, it can be all over the place, naturally expressed or distorted and so for each of you you would want to be looking here on how can I be responsible for myself and deeply deeply love myself and then I'm okay with the changing mercurial world that I live in here's where Mercury goes stationary direct on December sixth and of course one more time look what we've got venus is direct in scorpio but it's still opposing uranus and square the nodes mercury's retrograded back into scorpio and is creating that grand trine in water with chiron in the north node sun and moon at the time of the direct this is going to be just before a new moon are now in the squares to Neptune and Mars has moved into it and so there's ease there's stubbornness and there's opportunities for change throughout all of this Mercury retrograde and I cannot get away from this theme of when I drew up that chart for in you know stationary direct December 6th Looking towards next year, you know, south node moving towards Pluto and Saturn. South node is balsamic Pluto. South node is balsamic Saturn. Saturn, balsamic Pluto. So here's these reality checks that we all have to get in touch with. And where do we have to let go of the old ways and the old patterns? and move forward with evolving self-responsibility. 
So, how do I understand universal laws and truth? Where do I choose to act upon my beliefs or my evolving beliefs? How do I listen to those who differ from me? How do I move through relating issues? How do I create inner peace through any conflict? Where do I need to deepen my self-reliance? All right. Thank you, everyone. Here are the Mercury retrogrades for 2019. And our next free Mercury retrograde webinar is going to be March 3rd when Mercury's retrograde in Pisces. As you can see, we're going to have a lot of water for Mercury next year. We're going to have to be communicating about all those emotions. And we're going to get a taste of it in this Mercury retrograde cycle. Um, my 2019 forecast is going to be January 2nd. I think that's a Wednesday. Yeah, it's the day after New Year's. Duh. I think that's a Wednesday. And then um, here's the public webinars that I just got done doing. Uh, oh, the Jupiter and Sag is only one part. I didn't get that slide um, corrected. Um, but again, as Leroy said, if you, uh, until Sun and Sag, November 22nd, we're doing 50% off our forecasting webinars. And I don't think we've ever done that. I don't think we've ever done those webinars half price. No, I don't think so. so. I, yeah. I know we have not. Uh, also, I want to add, you know, your your generous offer to do a free relationship chart with the oh, purchase yeah. of a personal consultation through November 16th. So uh, before the end of the week, if you have um, a partner, intimate, a colleague at work, a, fam a family member, you want to kind of compare notes on a composite or a synastry, uh, take advantage of that free additional chart. Uh, again, November 16th only, and the PDFs, like Kim just said, through uh, Thanksgiving only. All right. Thank you, Leroy. I forgot about that one. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in to this Mercury Retrograde webinar. It is a free public webinar. You are welcome to share the PDF with anybody and everybody. And uh, thank you for telling people about our work. Mm -hmm. Wishing you all the best and wishing you peace through Mercury Retrograde. <laughs> Good night.